I want to show you today why this mini PC right here is probably better than a Raspberry Pi for what you're thinking about doing. Now this is not a catch-all solution for everyone, but for a lot of you guys, this might just be the perfect system for you. Now I've been a huge fan of the Raspberry Pi series of single board computers for years now. You can even see right here, this is my very first Raspberry Pi. It was the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus, and since the very first time that I got this i ended up in my lifetime already owning around six raspberry pi 3s and four raspberry pi 4s but over the years the market has completely changed and what used to be a very cheap and easy to get hobbyist system is now at a price range where it is competing with full-on computer systems and at the price point where a lot of these pi 4 starter kits are starting to reach you're kind of just looking at brand new full systems like this right Right here and i'm going to show you why this might just be a better grab for you than whatever pie you can find on the market right now now one of the biggest advantages of a mini pc like this is of course the specs that you get this specific model is rocking an intel n95 cpu now this is an alder lake n generation cpu so we're talking about four cores four threads with a max turbo of 3.4 gigahertz and a tdp of 15 watts now this specific system did come with eight gigabytes of ddr4 memory but you can upgrade it up to 16 gigabytes but it will only be in single channel but we are looking at a full intel uhd graphics that is a 1.2 gigahertz gpu with 16 execution units so an extremely cut down intel igpu but it does actually have native support for quick sync which is really really important and i'll show you in a little bit why it is a killer feature on a system like this but in terms of expandability we do have an extra extra SATA port so we can actually hook up a full SATA drive. Now in terms of expandability that will actually fit in this specific system, well we are looking at if you're going down the hard drive route, you're capped out at about two terabytes. That's usually around the maximum size of these laptop hard drives. But if you're going down the route of SSD, well in the 2.5 inch drive form factor, we do cap out at around four terabytes. You can find eight terabytes or even bigger drives in a around that form factor but they won't really fit in a system like this and you're looking at spending a lot more than they're actually worth so realistically you're capped out at around four terabytes but you also do get the m.2 slot that it comes with already populated with a 128 gigabyte ssd that in theory you could also populate all the way up to eight terabytes if you wanted to realistically four terabytes is going to be about the most economical now one of the biggest limiting factors is of course that the ssd slot only runs at PCIe 1x speed so it is very limited in terms of speed but that does mean that you can actually get cheaper drives so you can maximize in terms of capacity since the speed really won't be that important and we're still better off than whatever expandability we get with a raspberry pi with the raspberry pi you pretty much are extremely limited in terms of the amount of storage that you can have realistically before you have to start to rely on usb based drives and here's the thing people use raspberry pis for all kinds of different Different projects but some of the most common ones that i see recommended that people try out is running different services and trying a lot of self-hosting the thing is you get a lot more expandability and a lot more flexibility with a full system like this than having to rely on a very very low power arm soc personally i have at this point retired most of the raspberry pis that i had in my arsenal mostly because of the fact that i could pretty much get the cost of them back in the current market conditions and a lot of what i was doing i have been able to replace with these small little mini pcs what most people are really trying to do is run things like a plex media server running a file server running something like a pie hole to do network wide ad blocking or running a lot of self-hosted home automation services or even just using them as educational tools for things like programming or just as an introduction into computing for younger kids a lot of this stuff can be done on a very cheap mini pc like this and the benefits that you get is you get far more powerful hardware and you get some something that is far more flexible in terms of what you can do. In terms of self-hosting, this is pretty much going to be a universally just better system than any Raspberry Pi you can get right now. Those four Alder Lake cores are going to do a fantastic job in pretty much any task that you're gonna ask of them. 
And you remember that quick sync feature that I mentioned earlier that was really important? It's what allows this system to be a just universally better media server than something like the Raspberry Pi. What this means is that if we're running our own Plex server, our own MB server, or our own Jellyfin server, we're going to be able to utilize the full hardware transcoding feature. And because Intel's iGPUs are just so widely supported for this kind of task, you're going to run into pretty much no issues whatsoever. And because we get a full Windows installation with a system like this, you pretty much have the flexibility of whatever operating system you want to utilize here. Whether you're a far more comfortable Windows user and you're just looking for an easy solution to set up the services and you just want to set it and forget it, you can do that with Windows without worrying that it's going to utilize so much of the resources of this hardware. If you want an introduction into Linux or if you want to start hosting your own headless server, you're pretty much going to be able to run whatever version of Linux that you want on here or you can run a specialized OS like TrueNAS or even Proxmox if you want to go down the route of just setting up virtual machines. And look, I think a lot of people really overestimate just how much hardware you really need to run a lot of these services. A lot of the times, once you get just a bit more powerful than a Raspberry Pi, you already get most of the benefit that you would really get to the point where you don't need to spend a whole lot of money. Now, one of the biggest selling points of the Raspberry Pi is the fact that it is based off of ARM, so it is just inherently far more efficient. The amount of power that a Raspberry Pi utilizes is just so minuscule that it really is just a whole league different than even the best Windows systems. That being said, this mini PC does not really utilize that much power. At the stock 15 watt TDP, this pretty much only uses 15 watts from the wall measured with a kilowatt meter. And that is with the CPU at 100% load, which most of the time you're really not going to be doing. This is going to be idling which it idles more around nine watts which is still not as good as an arm system but it isn't really that much higher that you would really need to be in an extremely expensive area in terms of power cost to really make this a noticeable aspect now it does also mean that you can't really run this windows system headless in, in the sense that it does need a fan for cooling while a raspberry pi doesn't necessarily need that now there's definitely a lot of different projects that utilize the raspberry pi that you just will not be able to replace with a specific system like this, especially if you're the kind of person that likes to tinker a lot and uses these Raspberry Pis as control boards and things like that. Using a full Windows PC for a specific project like that is going to be a little difficult there. Thankfully, the market is full of a bunch of Raspberry Pi alternative single board computers. Just know that you're not going to have anywhere near as wide a documentation as you will with a Raspberry Pi. Now, in terms of expandability, the PC for the most part really wins out on here where the Pi really has an advantage is having custom hardware made for it. There's a wide variety of different GPIO hats that you can put onto the system so that you can get a wide assortment of different features. But these are very specialized things where it's really only very specific scenarios where you would need these. But these are exactly the types of scenarios where the Raspberry Pi becomes very difficult to replace. But for a large amount of users, the expandability of a mini PC like this is just exactly exactly what you need. You can expand on the RAM and of course you can expand on the storage. And a lot of the times those end up becoming the biggest limiting factors on a Raspberry Pi before anything else. And really the biggest selling point for me and the reason that I've pretty much ended up replacing most of my Pis with systems like this is specifically because of the fact that it has just a lot more usability. Being able to actually fully utilize a desktop environment in a actual functional way is actually a huge feature. If you've ever tried to use a Raspberry Pi as a desktop, you know that it is just not there yet. It might be able to open up web pages perfectly fine, but as soon as you try to load anything with video, which is what most of the internet is at this point, it falls apart, which means that it is not an actual functional alternative to a desktop, which this is. Once I'm done using any of these systems, I can just hand it to a family member and they will have a full working desktop environment and I could put them on pretty much whatever operating system I want them to be on. Whether I want to, them to be on Windows, whether I want them to try out whatever version of Linux, or I could even put Chrome 
OS on there to really limit what they can actually have access to. And this all around is a huge feature for me because I personally hate the scenario where I just don't have a use for a system anymore. Specifically, this Raspberry Pi 3 Model B that I have right here, that is my very first Raspberry Pi. The only reason that I still have it is just out of sheer nostalgia and having kind of a sentimental attachment to it. At this point, it's really just not strong enough to do practically anything that I would have wanted it to do. Over the years, it has been a file server for me. I ran Pi-hole on it for a couple of years, but all of the things that I really wanted it to do, I have just been able to replace with a singular mini PC. And I struggle to even find a use for it right now for myself. And I will probably just keep it around as a decorative piece, which is perfectly fine, but it does show that there are limitations to just such specialized hardware like this. Now the Raspberry Pi served its purpose in the sense that it was great to just walk into Micro Center, pick up some PC hardware and just grab a Raspberry Pi because they were cheap and plentiful enough that you could find something to do with them. But at the price point where they're sitting at now, you have to kind of have a deliberate reason for actively looking for that specific hardware. And a lot of the times, if you have a specific task that you're looking to get done, it might just be more fulfilled by a full on desktop because it's going to give you a little bit more flexibility there. Now, again, if you're a tinker and you are just actually building hardware and you're building things that need something the size of a pie, well, there are alternatives out there. But again, the documentation is really the biggest pitfall. But some of the most common Raspberry Pi projects are pretty much just self hosting. And a lot of the times that can just be done with a full on PC that will allow you to run whatever operating system that you want out there. So it's definitely something to consider. I'll see you guys in the next one. And now that most of the people are gone, I just want to tell you about some of my favorite deals that are going on right now on Amazon. Now on Amazon right now, you can find these HP Elite Desks 800 G4s for around 200 to 210 dollars they really fluctuate in terms of price sometimes they go down to around 190 180 every once in a while but these are fantastic because you get the i5 8500t now this is a six core six thread cpu and the igpu is going to give you wide support for pretty much every codec that you want besides av1 and eight gigabytes of ram is perfectly fine for a starter server and 256 gigabytes does give you more than even the b link that i was showing you earlier but the t model is only capped up to 35 watts so if you're willing to sacrifice some room and go with a bigger system here, you can actually get the full 8500, which will have a TDP of 65 watts, and you can actually get 16 gigabytes of RAM this time around. Now keep in mind that if you do go with the bigger version here, it is a misleading size. Yes, you do get a PCIe slot, but it will only let you put in one slot cards, which means you're realistically not getting a GPU in here. But for the price, it is a pretty rock solid deal and both of these systems are going to be great for starter systems if you don't want to go down the route of a brand new system so i could definitely recommend either one of these but anyways i will catch you in the next one